Hello and welcome to our session about Microsoft Teams and phone system. And why we think it's a must have for the modern workplace. So let's start with a short introduction. My name is Michael. I'm an MVP for Office Apps and Services with Teams Focus. And I'm also a co-founder and CEO of a small company which is doing basically uh, Microsoft Teams projects uh, com combined with change management, user adoption, and yeah, basically Office 365 topics um, on my spare time. Maybe spare time. I spend a lot of time in the community and talk about my favorite topic, Teams, adoption, everything you will hear today as well. I'm running a show which is called Talk Microsoft 365 together with Torsten. And we are talking about the new stuff, the exciting stuff, and how to use these new things and exciting things from Microsoft 365. I'm also the uh, lead of the Teams user group Germany as a chapter in Munich, and I'm running a Adoption and Change Forum. And now, Thorsten, next to you. Next to me. Yes, thanks, Michael. Um, also, from my side, um, a welcome to our session, a short introduction to myself. My name is Thorsten Pickern. Uh, my name is Thorsten Pickern. Um, I'm working as Microsoft UC consultant almost 10 years now here in Germany. Um, I have a blog uh, where I'm writing about Office 365 with a focus on Microsoft Teams and uh, Skype for Business. And for the German attendees and listeners here, I also have an own video channel on YouTube where I'm releasing on a weekly basis uh, short quick tip videos about Office 365 um, dedicated to end users. So. The topic here is to bring the new features or to, to bring the new yeah, features of Office 365 to the end users and to show how to use them. And yeah, also as Michael already said, I'm uh, talking with him about Microsoft 365 in our um, podcast and uh, video cast. And also I'm the host of the Teams user group in Germany for the location in Bochum. And now I would say, let's start with the, with the session itself. OK. So let's take a look into what you can expect in this session. We will talk about some secret ingredients. But basically, we talk about the why, the what, and the who. So <laughs> exactly. why we guess, uh, yeah. Uh, why we think uh, that that uh, Microsoft Teams phone system is is a must have for the modern workplace, and also we will explain um, and give a brief overview uh, what is the phone system with Microsoft Teams and how to implement it. Okay, it was almost a spoiler. So let's go into the um, in the real slide deck here. Okay. So, so <laughs> requests for a modern workplace, or uh, how how we will define, or how how the modern workplace is defined uh, in the past. Um, um, first of all, the modern workplace is defined by uh, that we would like to work from anywhere. Um, it doesn't matter if we are in the home office, uh, in the office, if we are mobile, in the Starbucks, uh, a restaurant, on vacation, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter where we are. Uh, we should be able or could be able to work uh, from anywhere. Uh, also, it's important that we have a full access to our data and our programs and that in a secure fashion so it's important that um, the access is uh, of course safe so there are no viruses uh, or malware in our data or that we do not upload any malware to our server system or to the cloud 
and um, that we are protected against accidental deleting of our data and so it's loss free. At the end, of course, it's also important that we can work together with our colleagues, um, even or of course, uh, during that time where we are working from home uh, most of the time um, and we have COVID-19. So uh, we have to work in a team, but also with other departments or other sites. And yeah, should, should, this should be a successful together at the end. And the question is how to achieve this. And here we have the next slide, please. Yes, Microsoft Teams as the modern hub, the hub for our information workers to do the information hub Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams fulfilled all these requests. We have Microsoft 365 as a secure platform behind that. We can use Microsoft Teams to work together. We have the chat functionality, the communication functionality, so we can do um, calls in the team, we can do uh, meetings and all the stuff we need to collaborate together on a document and to work together. But perhaps, I don't know if you all, all uh, it's the same for you, um, most companies um, forget uh, what, what about the phone system. So if I'm in the home office, um, how to get the office phone number to my home office? It is possible to be reachable there. And that is, this is a question here. And of course, this is possible with Microsoft Teams phone system. And now Michael, Michael will explain us the two options here. Exactly, because the idea is to make the right choice. That sounds complex. It is a little bit when you go very deep in the details. And we will talk about the details, but to give a very high level understanding for the different choices you have, first of all, you have just two options. When you would like to have telephony, traditional telephony into Microsoft Teams, you have just two options. The first one is cloud only. Microsoft offers a great, and, and I really, really think it is great service for telephony right away from the cloud. So no local components, um, work from everywhere, work secure, but there are some limitations. And that's why there's another option as well. Cloud and local. This is a combination of cloud, but with local components. These components are crucial for the connection with the traditional telephony with PSDN. Uh, There's a public switched telephony network, but they give us some advantages compared with the cloud in some situations. And you have to go a little bit deeper into the options to find the right option or the, the right selection, the right choice for you. And I will explain these two options now. So when we are talking about Microsoft Teams phone system, as Michael already said, we have two options. The cloud only way, this would be Microsoft calling plans. And um, this means of, for both options, you have a basement. This is Microsoft Teams and phone system licensing. So <clears throat> if you have um, the all inclusive license um, in case of a E5, Microsoft 365 or Office 365 license, the phone system is already included. And of course, Microsoft Teams. If you have an E1 or E3 license, Microsoft Teams is included in your package, but you need to license as an add-on the phone system itself. With these two components, Microsoft Teams and phone system, you are able to do outbound and to receive inbound phone calls from the PSN. And now 
uh, we have two options. Um, the first option are calling plans. This means Microsoft becomes your PSTN provider. So you have the option to buy new phone numbers by Microsoft or to migrate your existing uh, phone number to Microsoft. And um, then Microsoft is your single point of contact regarding PSTN and phone system. The second option is to use Microsoft Teams direct routing. The base is here the same. So Microsoft Teams and the phone system add-on is required. Uh, if you have a one or a three license, you have to buy the phone system add-on separately. Uh, if you have the all-inclusive package E5, then all, uh, the phone system is already in your licensing package included. And to be more um, flexible here, uh, you have the session border controller. Um, this is a requirement piece and the local component, um, as Michael already explained in the last slide. And what a session border controller is, I will explain in a few minutes. So let's take a look into the pros and cons of both worlds. The first one is the cloud one. And the idea behind that is Microsoft is your only contact. Microsoft will be your provider for PSTN, for telephony. And you have a single vendor who's responsible for your environment from Teams as a software, for collaboration, for communication with other parties via internet, but also for telephony. And that's good. It's good. It's definitely something you can work with because it gives you um, a single contact, but it's limited. It's not available in every country. You can see it on the map here. Um, it is basically available in the most countries of Europe, in the US, um, in Canada, in Japan, in Australia, and New Zealand. In Australia, via another provider, so it's not Microsoft directly. But in the rest of the world, it's not, uh, not available. So it's maybe for a global company, not the best way to use it right away. If you have a location in Africa or South America, you will have an issue. The same for Russia and of course for China. So there are a lot of different countries where Microsoft is not your, not available as provider. And the other one is you get the uh, user and you pay per use, but you pay a um, specified fee per user instead of a combined fee for everyone in your company. So let's estimate you have a company with 2,000 users um, and you have an existing PSDN contract. Usually you have a specific amount of calling minutes for your users based on the existing real calling behavior. This is something you are, do not have with Microsoft Teams. You can just estimate how the users will telephony, use the telephony. And there are different types for the 20 uh, license itself. So you do have a national calling plan, which is uh, for, uh, yeah, obviously national calls with uh, 120 minutes. In the enterprise agreement, you can get another one with 200, 240, but it's for national calls only. The other one is a nation, in, national and international calling plan together. Therefore, you get a um, 2,100 uh, 2, national minutes and 600 international minutes, which got an upgrade in some countries like US, there you got 2,400 and 1,200 minutes uh, for international calls. 
So the first one was national, the other one was uh, international. Unfortunately, these licenses cannot be matched in a single calling minute plan or pool. So let's think about the users. You have 10 users which, are, uh, which have the national calling plan. You get uh, these users pooled and you get these users pooled uh, together to 1,200 to, uh, 1, minutes per month. You have 10 other users which got the international plan with um, 1,200 um, national minutes and 600 international minutes. These users get pooled as well. So you get 12,000 uh, national minutes and 6,000 uh, international minutes. But you cannot combine these different user groups. So the 1,200 national minutes cannot be combined to the 12,000 national minutes from before. So you have to have to make a good um, you have to make a good estimation for your licensing planning. The good part is you can add a communication credit, which allows you to uh, make some international calls when you have a national plan. It's just a different rate specified from the country you're calling from and you're trying to reach on the other side. So it's a bit complex. Um, and you have to make a good calculation before you start with a licensing buy. The other one is, and it's definitely a pro, you have a single point of contact. So as mentioned before, it's the only provider here. The other one is cloud and local. And that's both of uh, best of both worlds because you're more flexible. You can use the existing connection and you can use the existing contract. So you are not um, forced to move your current contract from your current provider on a specific date to, the, uh, to Microsoft and move over your telephone numbers to, the, to Microsoft as new provider. You can use Microsoft telephony a bit faster, not related to your current PSDN contract. And of course, if you have a specific contract with cheap calling minutes, you can use it as well because it's on your hand, the provider is on your hand and every complex scenario for dialing is available with the local component SPC. Another one is you can add legacy devices, products like analog and fax devices. And last but not least, you can use something like a centralized zip trunk strategy where you select multiple countries, use a single zip trunk instead of multiple in the different countries. You combine it in a centralized zip trunk and everyone is using the internal network instead of um, have a local PSEN breakout. But it's depending on your strategy. So what we have to consider when we would like to move to Microsoft Teams phone system. First of all, we have to look at our users, of course. Um, users are currently perhaps, no, no, not perhaps. Users are currently different options uh, with the classic PBX currently. So there are some users are using um, a traditional desk phone. Some users perhaps are using a soft client. Uh, so they are using headsets and I guess you will also have some users which are using the desk phone in combination with the headset. And there's a question, can we fulfill all these requirements with Microsoft Teams? And the answer is yes, you can. So uh, we have the option for headsets, desk phones with Microsoft Teams. The only exclusion here is DECT. If you have DECT, um, this is currently not supported native in Microsoft Teams. Then we have the other uh, options or 
components like conference rooms and also in public areas um, where we have uh, more uh, not, not named accounts uh, uh, for these devices and uh, here we have special license options in form of the Teams room license for meeting rooms and the common area phone license for public area. And from, from device pers perspective, um, we have also some special devices for the meeting rooms with audio and video integrated. And for the public area, we have normal desk phones, uh, which are also able to do a wall mount and uh, can use them here um, instead of a PC with a headset. Then we have also to consider uh, the switchboard or hotline if, you, if it's uh, in place in, in your infrastructure. So if you have um, this requirement and most companies have almost a switchboard in place, uh, what are the options here? Of course, we can use headsets and the IP phone um, if necessary. And you also have some onboard um, products provided by Microsoft. Uh, they are called Auto Tenant and Call Queue. With these both tools, you can implement uh, very um, tough uh, switchboard and hotline uh, scenarios, um, which are not uh, the professional ones where you have a very uh, detailed reporting, but with these two tools, Autotenant and Call Queue, you can uh, transfer a lot of functions from the classic PBX to Microsoft Teams. And last but not least, at uh, least as Michael already told us, there are analog endpoints we have to consider. So there are always fax machines, modem connections, uh, door opener, alarm systems. And here it's important to know that when you decide to use Microsoft Teams calling plans, these analog endpoints are not supported currently. So there's no option to connect analog endpoints when you move your phone number to Microsoft Teams. You have to choose another option to connect, to, to connect these endpoints to the phone system. And um, if, we, if, you, if you decide to use direct routing, it's possible to implement them because we can route on the SPC itself uh, inbound calls for analog endpoints uh, to the um, uh, endpoints itself. So now I'm talking a lot of SPC and Michael Chu. So what, what is an SPC? Here's the same SPC anywhere. Um, an SPC in general translates the provider zip to Microsoft Teams supported zip. That means every, of course, there is an RFC for zip, which describes with, um, how the message structure is and uh, what um, types of messages are supported. But as always, every vendor interprets this RFC on its own. And uh, therefore, we need an instance between our provider and the um, um, infrastructure behind or, 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 on, or our own infrastructure like a PBX or Microsoft Teams. And this can be an SPC, so it will receive the zip trunk uh, messages and will do some translation so Microsoft Teams understand what we would like to do to do a phone call from A to B and vice versa. The second thing we have when we are talking about an SPC is some kind of firewall. It's not a firewall, but it's some kind of firewall for zip communication. So uh, the SPC terminates on a public IP address, mostly uh, the zip trunk from our provider. And on the SPC itself, we can configure uh, routing rules and also some firewall rules where we define from which endpoints we would like to receive or from which endpoints we allow to receive zip communication and therefore we protect us with the SPC against zip fraud. And then it's also important to know that the SPC itself could be a physical machine but also a virtual machine, machine and in time of cloud and public cloud, it's also supported to implement the SPC on public cloud provider like Amazon AWS or uh, Microsoft Azure, of course. We have got some information about the technical part, but the technology is not the only thing 
Um, I've mentioned it in the, in the introduction. I'm often in a situation where the technology is the main focus and the users will be forgotten. And that's the wrong way to work. Um, you have to go to the uh, users and to explain why it's important to change, uh, the, the change is important, why they may have to change the way they currently work. And that's where user adoption is coming in. First of all, you should be aware of your users. You are usually, you are usually aware of your users in some kind of way. So you may know how your C-level, your executives are working, maybe. Um, you maybe know how the IT department is working, but do you know how the sales department is working, the marketing department? And maybe if someone in a, um, on, the, on the manufacturing level is working. So you should be aware of the different ways and also for the trainings, how to um, address your, the change to the different users. The next one is, if you get the idea of your users, you should create some personas. And maybe you get the idea behind that when the users are combined in, this, in a group of users, how they work. That's how um, personas works. So when you create personas, you are looking for who is working like another group of them. And you get the idea behind, um, behind the users in the different departments, for example, sales, and get the idea how they usually work and maybe find another group of people who is working the same way. So you can add them as a persona and you can specify the way to address your change to the users with the right idea behind that, the right way. And it's not only for um, the way how you address the change itself, it's also about the devices. When we make a change from the telephony system, like a traditional telephone, which has no soft client at all, you get some really interesting questions. Like, um, what happens with my desk phone? Can I have a desk phone? I don't like headsets. I don't like something in my ear, on my ear, over my ear, on my neck, over my head. Or can I use something different? And there you get some ideas when I just click on the next slide are a lot of different options. For the headsets, for example, you can select something which is on single ear, mono ear, or it's on both ears. So some users don't like it to have it on both ears, in ear, over ear. These are options too. Desk phones, if you are, say you would like to have some desk phones, which are not the best way when you have a flexible office or using home office a lot, um, then you have the same options as well. There's, I don't know, 20, 30 different devices. And yeah. some are for different use cases. Um, Torsten mentioned it before for the conference uh, rooms or for common area phones, you may have some different requirements. The next one is room systems. There's also a lot of different devices over here and it has to fit into your strategy, in your company strategy for the meeting rooms. Also, if you are traveling with speakerphones, um, you are traveling, the speakerphones can help you with some uh, kind of small conference devices. They are good for the audio quality and um, sometimes it makes sense to use them on the one way or the other. In the home office, maybe makes sense as well. It depends. And the different ops you have should be addressed to your users. So when you switch from a traditional telephony system or even another soft client, 
you will have some options and you should provide some options to your users to make them understand, ah, maybe that's a good point to work better. Maybe with a small headset or even understand how the new Teams room this is, will work. What is our conclusion? Of course, we have said Teams and phone system is definitely the best for a modern workplace. I hope we could deliver some ideas behind that, why it is. Teams is already the hub for collaboration. But with telephony, it's getting flexible and reliable. Then you have a lot of devices for all types of end users available. And that's why we think that Microsoft Teams phone system completes your concept for a modern workplace. That's it. That's definitely marketing, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. So you have a single solution for everything. But yes, that's for from our side. Thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of the event. See you at the next. See you soon.